Next we have the correction mode selectors which are used to enter into either auto or graphical modes. Automatic mode is the easy mode which works by continuously tracking the pitch of an input sound and compares it to a user defined scale and then makes its corrections as needed. This mode is best used when you want a quick pitch fix for your track and works well in most situations. Just select your input type, set your key, select the scale, and you're on your way to a pitch perfect track. Let's take a quick listen. See how they run. There are, of course, many more features available in automatic mode that are used to fine tune your results, and we'll cover them all in detail in other tutorials. Switching the correction mode to graphical will change the user interface and display the graphical mode's controls and features. Graphical mode is similar to the auto mode in that it also continuously tracks the pitch of the incoming sound and modifies the output pitch to be closer to a desired pitch. But in graphic mode, the desired pitch is not a predefined scale tone, but rather is a graphical representation of your desired pitch called a correction object, found here in the main pitch graph display window. In this display, the vertical axis represents pitch with higher notes towards the top, while the horizontal axis represents time. The red curve represents the original pitch contour of the input track, while the desired target pitch or pitch contour is indicated in blue, and the green curve displays the exact output pitch based on the current setting of the retune speed for each correction object. The horizontal grid lines or lanes when show lanes is selected represent scale pitches to be used for reference when drawing in anchors or editing curves. The whole idea behind graphical mode is complete precision when correcting pitch you can really fine-tune the small nuances of a performance and fix even the slightest pitch problems here, all with complete visual feedback. Like automatic mode, there are many more features and functions here which we'll cover in detail in other tutorials. Next is the Options button, which when clicked will open a window containing a number of parameters that fall into the Set and Forget category. The Buffer Size section allows you to determine the number of seconds of memory buffer space that are permanently reserved for pitch tracking and pitch correction data in graphical mode. This is a per plugin setting and is separate for each plugin occurrence. To change the buffer allocation, click in the data field and enter the required number of seconds. The maximum buffer length is a whopping 14,400 seconds, which equals 4 hours. For hosts that provide valid time information, Autotune Evo will display all track pitch information at its correct time within the track. If your host supports this capability, setting the buffer to the length of the entire song and tracking the pitch in one pass will allow you to quickly and easily move to each section of audio to be corrected as necessary. The Undo section provides multiple undo, redo capability while editing in graphical mode. You can set the maximum allowable number here by clicking in the field and typing up to 20. Next, the Knob Control section lets you select how you want the knobs in Autotune Evo's interface to react to your mouse movements. With vertical selected, clicking on a knob and moving the cursor up or down will turn the knob clockwise or counterclockwise respectively. With horizontal selected, clicking on a knob and moving the cursor right or left will turn the knob clockwise or counterclockwise respectively. Choosing radial will allow you to click anywhere around the circumference of the knob and then press and hold the mouse button and rotate the knob in the desired direction. The custom cursors option when selected allows you to use custom cursors in graphical mode. Normally, Autotune Evo displays different cursor shapes in the pitch graph display to help you grab and drag objects, such as the object cursor or the anchor point cursor, but some host applications mistakenly think that they own the cursor when it's in a plug-in window. This may cause the cursor to flash as the host and Autotune Evo alternately try to set the cursor shape. If this happens and annoys you, just unclick this checkbox and it will stop the flashing, but you'll no longer see Autotune Evo's custom cursors. The Other Preferences section contains more fine-tuning and customization options. When Display Vertical Line at Cursor Time Position is checked, a vertical line will be displayed at the cursor position in graphical mode. This is most useful when you're comparing the various pitch values such as Track Pitch, Correction Object Pitch, and Output Pitch at one or more time locations in your track. Next, Autotune Evo features independent retune speeds for each correction object. You now have the ability to set custom default retune speeds for the lines, curves, and note object types. These are the initial retune speed values that are assigned to each newly created object, but you can, if needed, modify each individual object's setting. To figure out your own values, just pay attention to what values you most commonly use for the various objects and set those as the defaults and then update as necessary. 
Next, the key binding section allows you to assign your most commonly used graphical mode tools and controls to the 10 number keys that appear above the letter keys on the QWERTY portion of your keyboard. Just click on any one of the number keys assignments and you'll get a large pop-up list with all the available tools and commands. Keep in mind some hosts reserve the numeric keypad for host keyboard shortcuts even when a plug-in window is active, so the key bindings apply only to the number keys on the QWERTY portion of your keyboard. Finally, the following Auto-Tune Evo options are available for VST and audio units only. The window size options allow you to select among three preset sizes or specify a custom size of your choice for the Auto-Tune Evo user interface. Clicking any of the preset buttons will enter those dimensions in the width and height data entry fields. To enter a custom size, simply click in the desired field and enter the value of your choice. The new size will take effect when you click the Save button. Some hosts, however, do not support immediate resizing of an open plugin window. If yours is one of those, after clicking Save, you'll have to close the Autotune Evo window and reopen it to have the new size take effect. Since real-time resizing is supported in all current versions of Pro Tools, neither the RTAS nor TDM versions of Autotune Evo include or need the window size controls. Let's go back to the RTAS version for a moment for more shared features. When the Save as Default box is checked, any changes you make to the various option settings are saved as defaults for all future instances of Autotune Evo. If you want to make a temporary change to an option setting for a particular track but want to retain the previous default for future instances, uncheck the Save as Default box before clicking the Save button. Now your modified value will take effect in the current instance of Autotune Evo, but future instances will revert to the previously saved value. Okay, that's it for the Options window. Let's close it and get back to the main window. Continuing on, the sample rate display indicates the sample rate of the current audio file as reported to Autotune Evo by the host application. Autotune Evo is a high sample rate compatible plugin, so if your host application and audio hardware are capable of dealing with up to 192 kHz files, Autotune Evo will process them correctly. Finally, the Instance ID will display the currently viewable Autotune Evo's plugin's instant identification number. Some host applications assign numerical instance IDs to multiple instances of the same plugin, which are particularly useful if you're using any of Autotune Evo's MIDI functions, as they allow you to be sure that you're routing the MIDI data stream to the correct instance of Autotune Evo on the desired track. Well, that's it. Now you know what Autotune Evo is, how it works, and what its main features and functions are. This concludes the tutorial. Thanks for watching.